good morning friends uh, today i'm going to talk about the inflammation of the conjunctiva and in that series it is the infective conjunctivitis that i will take you through in this presentation infective conjunctivitis means inflammation of the conjunctiva that is caused by the microorganisms and this is the commonest variety of the conjunctivitis infective conjunctivitis occurs in spite of the fact that the conjunctiva has been provided with the natural protective mechanisms or defense mechanisms present in the form of low temperature due to the exposure of the exposure to the air you see the conjunctiva is all the time exposed and that leads to the evaporation and evaporation leads to the cooling so there is a lower temperature which is not very congenial for the growth of the microbes the second remains the physical protection by the lids they close and they offer some mechanical protection there is a flushing action of the tears which is again a mechanical phenomena which will flush out any deleterious agents lying in the conjunctival cavity sac and there is antibacterial activity of the lysozyme which is an ingredient of the tears and there is what good antibacterial activity and then there is a humoral protection by the tear immunoglobulins so all these mechanisms are there despite that the infective conjunctivitis is quite common now it is caused by the bacteria it is bacterial conjunctivitis and there is a relative decrease in the incidence of the bacterial conjunctivitis these days however in the developing countries it is still continues to be the commonest type of the conjunctivitis it can occur as a sporadic or an epidemic and there are sometimes the outbreaks of the bacterial conjunctivitis are especially frequent during the monsoon season now what is the etiology of the bacterial conjunctivitis we can consider the etiology under these subheads the predisposing factors causative organisms and the mode of action mode of infection the predisposing factors include flies poor hygienic conditions hot dry climate poor sanitation and dirty habits they all contribute and they help in the they help the infection to establish and as the disease is highly contagious it can spread from one person to another Ready. If you look at the causative organisms, this is Staph aureus, which is the commonest cause of the bacterial conjunctivitis. Staphylococcus epidermidis, Streptococcus pneumoniae or pneumococcus. They are usually associated with the petechial serpentine hemorrhage. We also call them hemorrhagic conjunctivitis. The disease that is bacterial conjunctivitis. is self limiting and usually lasts for about 10 days streptococcus pyogenes which is hemolyticus is a virulent organism and it usually produce a severe form of the conjunctivitis that is a membrane formation we call it pseudo membranous conjunctivitis the hemophilus influenzae this hemophilus egyptius and coccyx bacillus it classically causes epidemics of the mucoviral conjunctivitis the moraxilla exemplary bless bacillus it causes angular conjunctivitis we'll talk about that later on pseudomonas pyogenia is a virulent organism which readily invades the cornea so it is very important it is a very virulent organism and gonorrhea or listeria gonorrhea typically produces acute virulent conjunctivitis in the adults and ophthalmia neonatorum in the newborns now it is the gonorrhea neisseria gonorrhea which is capable of invading intact corneal epithelium and therefore one has to be careful when you deal with the ophthalmia neonatorum neisseria meningitis or meningococcus it may produce mucoporulent conjunctivitis cornibacterium diphtheri causes acute membranous conjunctivitis we know diphtheria or the bacterium diphtheri is known to produce membranes elsewhere also in the body however 
these infections are rare nowadays. The mode of infection is better than the virus. Gandhadeva may get infected from these three megalithics, exogenous, secondary or local spread, and the endogenous from the bloods. Exogenous is directly through the close contact, for example, airborne or waterborne infections, or through the vector transmission, such as flight, or through the material transfer, such as infected fingers of the doctors, nurses, common towels, handkerchiefs, and infected thermometers. So they all constitute the exogenous route of infection or exogenous mode of infection. The local spread can occur from the neighboring structures, for example, infected lateral shape, lids, and nasopharynx. Besides the change in the character of the relatively innocuous organism other than the lateral shape itself may cause infection. So what I mean by that. The, some bacteria are normally present in the Canadian state, like, such as Corini bacterium zerosis, which is morphologically identical to the Corini bacterium, but it is innocuous and it is not going to cause any pathology. However, under the different conditions, under changed conditions, or when the character of these microbes or organisms change, they may be the cause of the infection sometimes. And the third is the endogenous type or endogenous mode of infection. It is rare, but can occur through the bloodstream, for example, gonococcal and many other infections. Now, what is the pathology of the bacterial conjunctivitis? The pathological changes occurring in the bacterial conjunctivitis can be subdivided as number one, vascular response. The blood vessels respond by congestion and increased permeability. Congestion vessels they respond. It is associated with the proliferation of the capillaries. So congestion, increased permeability, and proliferation of the capillaries are the vascular responses obtained that are seen in the bacterial enterprise. The cellular response occurs in the form of exudation of the polymorphs and other inflammatory cells into the substantia propria of the Kandidava and the Kandidava cell. So these are the inflammatory cells essentially, which are outboard in the Kandidava cell, or they are lost in substantia propria of the Kandidava. Three, the Kandidava tissue response. The Kandidava becomes edematous. The superficial epithelial cells degenerate, they become loose, and even discremate. There occurs proliferation of the basal layers of the Gandhava epithelium and increase in the number of the mucin secreting the blood cells. So, this is how the Gandhava tissue responds to the bacterial epithelium. The fourth one is the Gandhava discharge. The discharge consists of tears, mucus, inflammatory cells, discriminated epithelial cells, to so deep and bacteria. If the inflammation is very severe, Diabetes of the red blood cells may occur, and then frank blood seen in the basal cell, and the discharge may become blood stain. Severity of the pathological changes vary and depends upon the severity of the infection and the positive organisms. The changes are thus more marked in purulent conjunctivitis than in the mucopurulent conjunctivitis. Obviously, the purulent conjunctivitis is a more severe form of the disease. Now, these are the different clinical varieties of the bacterial conjunctivitis. Depending on the positive organisms and severity of the infection, the bacterial conjunctivitis may present in one of the following clinical forms acute cataral or mucopurulent conjunctivitis, acute purulent conjunctivitis, acute membranous conjunctivitis, acute pseudomembranous conjunctivitis, chronic bacterial conjunctivitis, chronic angular conjunctivitis. So these are the different clinical forms or clinical variety of the bacterial conjunctivitis. Let's talk about acute mucopurulent conjunctivitis as one of the prototypes. The acute mucopurulent conjunctivitis is the most common type of the acute bacterial conjunctivitis. It is characterized by marked conjunctival hyperemia and mucopurulent discharge from the eye. The common causative bacteria are 
Streptococcus aureus, of which this was pneumococcus and streptococcus. The mucopurulent conjunctivitis generally accompanies exanthematia such as measles and scarlet fever. But this is the mucopurulent conjunctivitis, which is a type of the bacterial conjunctivitis, the commonest type rather. Now, what is the clinical picture of the acute mucopurulent conjunctivitis? The symptoms are discomfort, foreign body sensations, little involvement of the vessels. There may not be any foreign body actually, but the involved vessels produce a typical foreign body foreign sensations. Foreign body sensations. There can be mild photophobia, mucopurulent discharge from the eyes, sticking together of the lid margins, discharge during sleep, slight blurring of the vision due to the mucus flex in front of the cornea. And sometimes the patient may complain of the colored halos due to the prismatic effect of the mucus flex present on the cornea. And you may be required to differentiate these colored halos from other conditions, that is, acute congestive glaucoma and intermissive cataract. Now, if you look at the signs of the acute conjunctivitis, there are conjunctival congestion. It is more marked in the palpebral conjunctiva, fornix, and the peripheral part of the peripheral conjunctiva. So, typically, the area around the cornea is not that remarkably congested in comparison. The other parts of the conjunctiva are more congested, and that gives the appearance of a fiery red eye. The chemosis or the swelling of the conjunctiva can be another feature. Particular hemorrhages are seen. The positive organism is pneumococcus. The of mucopus are seen in the phonics, and high and the lit bodies. And cilia are usually made together with yellow crust deposits at the base. The clinical course of the mucopurulent conjunctivitis, it reaches its peak in three to four days' time. If untreated, for example, in the mild cases, the infection may be overcome and the condition is cured in 10 to 15 days, or it may pass on to a less intense form, we call it chronic catarrhal conjunctivitis. So there is a clinical course, the complications, the acute bacterial, acute mucopolar conjunctivitis can complicate, as can produce complications in the form of marginal corneal ulcers, superficial keratitis, blepharitis, or dectrocystitis. It has to be differentiated from other causes of the acute red eye and also from other types of the conjunctivitis. It is made by typical clinical picture of the disease. As I said, there are different organisms that are going to present differently and it is further confirmed by conjunctival cytology and bacteriological examination of secretions and scrapings. So these are the different methods by which we can arrive at an accurate physiological diagnosis, which may be crucial in certain cases. Management, as I said, the bacteriological investigations and histological examination of secretions and the scraping of the pathogenic epithelium should be done. Topical drugs for the control of the infection is an important measure Ideally, according to the control sensitivity, we should choose the appropriate antibiotic therapy. However, clinically, a broad spectrum antibiotics such as superfloxacin or, or moxifloxacin in a frequency of six times a day are usually prescribed. Antibiotic ointment can be prescribed at bedtime, but please remember that the steroids are contraindicated. Systemic medications are rarely required. Analgesics and antibiotics are required only if there is pyrexia, sore throat, or preceptal cellulitis. Supported treatment, bandaging is rather contraindicated because it arrests the movement of the lids and may promote the growth of the bacteria. Dark dollars can be prescribed to minimize the photophobia and discomfort. The patient must keep his hands clean. No one else should be allowed to use patient's towel handkerchief or the other.